Allen wasn't happy with his team's performance, but was more upset with the headset problems last night and suggested that this isn't anything new for Pittsburgh when they visit New England. Take a listen. That's always the case. Here? Yes. Well, you're saying that every time you play here, you ever... I said what I said. Like, what exactly What? What exactly happened? You just didn't have any communication? We were listening to the Patriots radio broadcast for the majority of the first half on our headsets. Coach to coach or the coach to quarterback? Coach to coach. You mentioned the frequency of communication problems here. Is that something you've experienced in any other place where you guys have played? Guys, I'm answering questions regarding what happened in that stadium right there. So if anybody's got any more questions about what happened tonight, I'd be happy to address it. That's a, but that's a very serious thing that you're indicating that they're all. I'm not indicating nothing. I'm telling you what happened. And he did not stutter. <laughs> the NFL released the following statement. In the first quarter of tonight's game, the Pittsburgh coaches experienced interference in their headsets caused by a stadium power infrastructure issue, which was exasperated by the inclement weather. The coaches' communications equipment, including the headsets, is provided by the NFL for both clubs' use on game day. Once the power issue was addressed, the equipment functioned properly with no additional issues. Yahoo Sports, citing an unnamed source, reported that the Steelers will file a complaint with the league about both the equipment failure and officials not turning off headsets on both sidelines. We welcome to the desk now, Herm Edwards. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Still I got fuzzy. my headset in. Yeah, yeah you're oh. kind of fading out, but I got you. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a problem with all this? Well, uh, this occurs at times. It really does. Okay. It's, it's, uh, I've been in, was in the league for a number of years. It occurred. Uh, on, on, in, in, on my watch as a head coach, sometimes even in my own, our own stadium. And I think the procedure is this, obviously, when your headphones are bad, you let the officials know. Uh, the, the protocol is to obviously turn the headphones of the opponents uh, as well off. And that should, that should happen. And I'm pretty sure they were able to do that. This didn't interfere with what happened uh, in this mm -hmm. game last night. Uh, when you think about the Pittsburgh Steelers, with the bad interference, they were still able to move the football. They had over 400 yards, uh, really, offensively. Their inability to cover the tight end was the issue. <laughs> and we said that going into this game, that last year this football team gave up 11 touchdowns to tight ends, and last night it gave up four. And so that saga continues to show itself. If you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Mike was, was hot under the collar, because this was a game when he looks at it, you really put yourself in position to lose this game by your own errors, whether it was covering a tight end, dropping some footballs, catching a touchdown, but your foot's out of bounds. These things, when you play a Super Bowl team on the road, get you beat. And so Mike was hot about everything, and I can understand the phones going out, and obviously it's New England. All that has transpired this whole offseason is the first game of the season. Everybody's excited about football, and guess what? The head coach when the game's over said, headphones didn't work. Mm. Well, everybody's talking about the headphones now. Let's just look at the game for what it was worth. Both coordinators were on the sideline, offensive and defensive coordinators. So you, you can still communicate to your players. And this game was lost by the Pittsburgh Steelers rather than won by the New England Patriots because of the errors they made. Okay, but as Jets head coach, yes. did you ever experience sure. any funny business in Foxborough? I don't know if it's funny business, but headphones being out and in other places as well. And they go out every once in a while. That's part, and you have a plan when they go out. You, okay. Look, it's just like players. When a player gets hurt, they don't stop the game and says, oh, by, by the way, your first string quarterback just went down. We've got to cancel the game now. You've got to adjust. You've got to go play. And Mike and those guys did that last night. But you look at this game, when you really break it down, this was a game, if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, you got to look at your secondary and the back end miscommunications. The tight end. I mean, we talked about it all week before the they game. They were going to shut him down. the That's tight end. Well, guess what? Tight end caught four touchdowns. 87. He's going to run up the scene, guys. There he goes up the scene. It's killing this guy right now because I was on his radio show yesterday and I said, we got to be worried about the tight end, Stephen A. That's his Pittsburgh Steelers. And really, Pittsburgh moved the football offensively. They really did. If you're New England, you got to be concerned with your running game, yep. your run defense, because Pittsburgh ran the football mm -hmm. and really made some good throws in but the passing backup. game. But, you know, interception here, a drop pass here, uh, a misplay of a ball in the end zone you should catch, and then the tight end running up the seam all night. That's never good. Get you beat. You want to go? Go ahead. I got a lot to say. So, so Coach, <laughs> you're saying that you, as the head coach, yes. would not have filed this complaint that the Steelers reportedly filed. No. You would let it go and go on to the next let it go, week. Move on. I that didn't get us. That, that, if, if I look at that game and I was sitting in that seat, that did not get us beat. 
I don't blame him for filing this complaint. And I do love me some Mike Tomlin, and I love that sound bite. I, I loved what he said afterward because you want to talk about straight from the heart. That, that's what I appreciate about him. He's going to tell you just about precisely how he felt after that game. And I, I do agree with you. Strategically, it didn't lose the game for the Pittsburgh Steelers, in part because your quarterback's a veteran quarterback, and I can make the case he could call his plays better than Todd Haley could call them for him, but, but that's a whole other issue. But, but you have two veteran quarterbacks who are not going to be at, at all knocked off balance by not having communication with their coordinator. Coach to coach, that's a whole other issue. But, but here's my problem. It's just hard for me to believe, after all we have heard and read and seen reported by outside the lines about past Patriots cheating, mm -hmm. it has been verified, <coughs> it has been documented, they got busted for Spygate. With, with all that as the backdrop to last night, it's just hard for me to believe that that was just some far-fetched coincidence, like a million-to-one accident that all of a sudden the headsets go out. And look, am I saying that Bill Belichick orchestrated that? I, I have no idea, but I think he loved it because it makes every team that walks into that place see ghosts. Everybody's looking over their shoulder. We heard the, the story about Peyton Manning has told Peter King that, man, when big games at Foxborough, I never talk strategy in the locker room, you know, deep strategy. I go out in the hall and talk about it just in case. Well, that, yeah, that's pretty strong stuff. So everybody is looking over their shoulder in Foxborough, every visiting team, and then that happens. And of course, the NFL presides over it, but how did the Patriots broadcast get in there? It's, it's almost laughable that it did happen on this night, Just so right deadly. after Deflate Gate. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Are you saying there were some shenanigans being done here? It's, Are you saying the New England Patriots maybe have done this on purpose? Well, Just to send a message to the NFL? I gotta tell you. It, it's almost that? like they're they're saying, yeah, watch this. Like this is Belichick. You, you want to talk about arrogant now? That I'm I'm just going to remind you, just just quickly. If we go back to the genesis of Spygate, remember Eric Mangini. We all know him. Remember he he left Bill's staff to go coach the, the team that you coach, the New York Jets, and he he just said very simply, Bill. I know you tape the defensive signals. Just don't do it to me. You can tape everybody else. Just don't do it to me. <laughs> and, it. and Bill did it to Eric, and Eric just said, I just can't take this. I'm, I'm going to say something about this, and that sparked what, what happened. Okay, go ahead. I just want to point out one thing before Stephen A. goes and mm -hmm. you continue. So the NFL provides the headsets, yes. but it's the home team who's responsible for the installation and the maintenance of the equipment. That's right. That's exactly so, right. So we're all clear. Exactly it it right. just seems fishy to me that it could be this million to one accident on opening night after Deflate Gate. I'm sorry, but I, I don't have any proof of that. Oh, I'm just going off history. I agree with Skip. It smells. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely smells. It's a little funky in there. Mm -hmm. oh, boy. But I'm going <laughs> to aim my attention to Coach Herm Edwards. Okay. I'm disappointed in your position. Okay. Let me tell you why I'm disappointed. Go ahead. And I'm a guy that, you know, I'm in the sports, it's what I do for a living, but, you know, I love politics in terms of just watching and, you know, purviewing the landscape, watching what's going on. And I have a little pet peeve about just anything. I can't stand when people are so caught up on an agenda that they gloss over the substance of what somebody's saying and whether or not they're right or wrong. We all know, Steelers lost last night. We all know that their secondary is pretty highly suspect, particularly when it comes to giving up touchdowns to tight ends, mm. as they did last night and that they did all last season. Yes. We get all of that. Mm -hmm. When have you ever seen Mike Tomlin duck that reality or that issue? Whatever the issue is with his team, he owns it. I recall a couple of years ago when the Steelers started out 0-4, and, and guys were walking off the field, and Mike Tomlin was sitting there looking. At, wow. They were walking off the field because he needed to look in Cat's eyes and see who's quitting, who's giving up. Say what you want about Mike Tomlin, but this brother is as real as it gets. Mm -hmm. He tells you where he stands, he tells you how he feels. He doesn't sugarcoat it. He ain't lying. He may not go all out, 
but he gonna let you know yeah. what the deal yeah. is. I didn't hear Mike Tomlin that was making an excuse no. for the Steelers losing last night. No. I didn't hear Mike Tomlin coming out that said we should have won the game and we got robbed. No, he didn't I didn't hear that. that. What I heard was a guy addressing a specific issue with this team that should not have happened. Not only did he go as far as to say that, why did he say it should not have happened, Coach? Because he basically said this ain't the first time. They asked him, was it the first time that that's happened here? He said, no. They tried to get him to talk about the bigger issues, and I ain't getting into all of that. I'm answering questions as to what happened tonight. They asked him if it happened before, he said, yeah. So what, and you saw him pee. Now, if he was peeved about his players, do you think that Mike Tomlin would have hesitated to tell us? No. Not at all. Has, right? The fact that he aimed his ire clearly in the direction of the New England Patriots should tell you something. And instead of looking at it from that perspective, we're sitting here and we're saying, well, you know, they gave up a lot of stuff to the tight ends. And I'm like, yeah, we know that. Yeah. Ain't no denying that. Right. He ain't denying that. Right. But the fact that Mike Tomlin felt the need to address it in that manner about that team gives me cause to pause and say, wait a minute now. All right, New England. You know, this Tom Brady deflated footballs, all that. Forget all that. But now, New England, what the hell is going on? What are you doing? Do I think the Patriots did something like this on purpose? Here's my direct answer to that. I wouldn't put it past them. Mm. Why should I? You know, all of this noise has been made. What did you just say, Molly? The NFL provides yep. the headsets. Yep. But in, in terms of the installation and the maintenance of it, this is what it is. Now, Bill Belichick is saying, well, we have problems with it, too. You're saying, well, it's different for the home team. I'm sorry. When actual plays are about to be executed, you might have difficulty because the crowd is hyped. But at the time when plays are just being installed the noise is the same i've been at many football games the noise is the same come on now if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck damn it it ain't a mongoose all right at some point in time you got to look at these guys and say wait a minute is this or is this not true not the, let's not make this about anything else with the steelers we know they lost we well, know they're an inferior team right now they lost. what this is about is mike tomlin who's one of the most credible individuals in the business when it comes to honesty, speaking out against the Patriots. Mm -hmm. That is the bottom line. How come we can't deal with that? We can deal with it. You're on one. You're on four going up there. Okay. So if it's gone out every time, why didn't you say it when the first time you lost to him? Or the second time because, you lost but, but, Or the third but, time but, you lost but, to him? But, I'm just asking the question. And I'm answering And I'm okay it. with my, what he said. And I'm answering it. Yeah. Coach, could it be because... Now that all of this has happened, you still let something like this happen? You can't, it can't be that you're incredulous as to, really? Yeah. After all y'all been through, yeah. opening night? Yeah. Opening night, you still I, let this happen? I understand that what's happening. That can't be the case. But here, they don't get a redo. Steve, now, that's not what I'm saying. And you know that's not what I'm saying. Okay, but I'm just saying. You, you, on many occasions in your career, you have pointed out and have spoken very eloquently about right and wrong. No doubt. Is this wrong? Well, if it's done intentionally by New England, if it's you, wrong. If you thought it was intentional and you were Mike Tomlin standing up like that, you were willing to address a subject like that. You trying to tell me you wouldn't believe it's wrong? Oh, I would absolutely. All right, well, then what does, you, what, does that, what does anything else have to do with it? No, if, if you're thinking that shenanigans went on, and it's gone on every time you've gone up there, then you need to say that right from the beginning. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? It's a pattern. Once but, it became a pattern, okay, he finally spoke up. Speaking of people who are credible and honest, mm -hmm. Ryan Clark, we often have on this show, has often said on this show, every time we played against Tom Brady, they knew what we were running on defense. Now, that's, that's his view of this, but he's obviously a Mike Tomlin disciple, is Ryan Clark. So that was their feeling. Every time they played, they knew what we were about to do. Right. Okay. So it was already embedded in their psyches when they went up there. And again, I think Bill Belichick loves all this. Yeah, he does. I think he's getting a, a hoot out of it, actually. Mike Tomlin, like you, Coach, 
plays by big boy rules. No doubt. He ain't going to whine and cry about something he ultimately knows his team is responsible for. The fact that Mike Tomlin was willing to address that like that, all I'm saying is it should tell us something because that's not what he does. He doesn't do that. I agree with you there, Stephen A., but we all have our opinions about the New England Patriots before this incident took place. This just adds to the... But he it never adds said anything. The, no, I'm not going to say but before that, the right. spy gate and everything else is going on. And he never on. said anything. That's exactly right. I'm just saying, this just adds more fuel to the fire, right? I mean, at, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. adds more fuel to the fire. And then uh, Tom Brady being interviewed by Tim, Jim Gray last night, going to sit up there and talk about bringing up all of this stuff about the Patriots is a discredit to the game of football. Well, damn it, stop letting stuff happen. How about that? Maybe we wouldn't have to talk about well, it. Jets go to Foxborough, where did you meet? Coach. In the I hallway? Know that. I'm just talking about his comments. When, our, when, when our you were the Jets head coach, did you meet in the locker room? Were you in the hallway? We met, we met in the locker room. Okay. We won a couple times up there. Okay. Yes, you did. All right. Okay. Herm, you're staying put. What a division, matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got some more football to talk. Herm will stay with us. We have the number one and two picks in the draft facing off in Tampa Bay. All eyes will be on Marcus Mariota and Jameis Winston. We'll tell you who will get their first win in the NFL. See